Hi, welcome to 20 Ideas Using 20 Fat Quarters with Gourmet Quarter. I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quarter, and we are having so much fun. We started out with a stack of 20 Fat Quarters, and we cut them all up into little pieces, all the same. And we're, throughout the 20 projects, we're using a small portion of each of those fat quarters in each project. So we're making all sorts of things. We've made quilts, and we've made bags, and we've made cushions, and we've made more bags, and we've made more quilts, and it just goes on and on and on. It's amazing how far 20 fat quarters can go. So there's a pattern in case you're interested in more information. Um, and on the website, on gourmetquilter.com, the pattern is all downloadable. So we're doing a new idea each day with a pattern each day, with a video each day, and we're actually up to idea number 19. So we are nearly through. So exciting. So what we had in, in the pattern in part one was a, a diagram of how to cut the fat quarters. So as I said, they're all cut the same. We had some labels so that we could label the stacks of 20, and this time we're up to number 19. So this is our stack number 19. So there's 20 squares in there. Um, and I have actually already made the sample, so this is what we're making. So this is a fairly simple, straightforward sort of design. You can just see it's squares, it's got borders around it, and more squares. Um, and I thought it would make a great quilt, it would make a good uh, knee rug type quilt, it would make a good back of the couch quilt, it would make a good floor quilt if you needed a quilt on the floor. It would make just an amazing quilt, let's face it. However. There's another thing we can do with it. So it is to this, it hasn't got any binding on it yet because I'm going to finish that off shortly. So I've quilted it, I've just used a very neutral um, on the back of it because it's not going to be seen. So that's a good opportunity if you've got a large piece of fabric that perhaps you wish you didn't have, it can go on the back. Because what we're going to make is a large, that large, floor cushion. So I'm thinking that a floor cushion is such a fun thing. I'm my life really has been as a floor dweller. I quite like being on the floor. Um, when I had young children, they liked being on the floor. Pets like being on the floor. Sometimes pets like a little bit more than being on the floor, I have to say. So maybe they would like a big floor cushion like this. Whatever it is, there's always a good reason for a large cushion or pillow, whatever it is that you're going to call it. So I, I, I'm going to put a, a just a binding of the black and white on as I like to do because I've got some in there. So I'm not going to make one in front of you particularly because it really is just some squares joined together. So I've got another one cut out in the light, instead of the dark grey, a light grey. So I've got all my squares, so it's just a matter of joining squares together, then putting a border around it, and then a narrow border, and then another border, and then a border of squares. So really it's just building out from the centre like a medallion, but, but simple. And I know that you all know how to do that by now. So I didn't think I would go through that particular process, it was more to show you how to make it up into a large cushion, because it's quite large as, as cushions go. So I've got my binding ready, and I've already made the backing, so I'll just get this off the table here so that I can show you what I'm doing. So I'm just going to make a, a, a large back with a hook and loop type fastening. So I've already kind of got it ready, but I haven't trimmed it to size yet. So I've just got this and I've used my fabric is double. Rather than using a batting, you could put batting in and quilt it. I just thought I would use double fabric this time. Um, you could use something a little bit heavier if you prefer to on the back, but this is a quilting cotton and I'm very happy with just the way things are going at the moment. So, so this is the inside and this is a smaller piece here and I've just put the hook, hook and loop already on. So I've already done it. So I've just got one small or narrower strip, um, relatively narrower, um, and that's going to go on the back. I guess on the lower edge it doesn't really matter, it's going to be a square pillow, so it can be on any edge. And then on the large main piece, which everything is, is just a double piece of fabric, so really it's just two pieces folded, and and then with this on. So, so what I've ended up doing is folding it, and pressing it and I've done two rows of top stitching just close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch and then quarter of an inch away from that one on both of those edges just to give them a little bit of uh, solid edging and then I put the hook and loop onto this one so I've put the fluffy side um, on here because that's the one that you're more likely to be having your hand against if you're putting a filling in and things like that well that's how I felt anyway 
And then this is the loopy one that, that grabs onto your jersey and grabs everything that it can get near. So we just stay away from that one as much as possible. So it's set down a little bit so that there is an overlap. doesn't need a huge overlap because it all holds itself together um, with the fastening. So there's a measurement in the pattern that tells you how far down, although if you don't have um, something like that in front of you, when you've got it on here and you know what size overall it's going to be, so you can overlap the fabrics. If you just lay that back, you can kind of work out where that's going to go. Um, but it is, as I said, all in the pattern, so the information is all there. You don't have to guess. So now that I've got it to this stage and I've got it all sitting together, make sure that everything is sitting nicely together. It's now going to be treated as one piece. So I want the overlap piece on the inside, so I want to place it right sides up because I'm going to place the quilt on top and we'll get it trimmed because the back is a, is a touch large at the moment because I wanted to be able to trim it to match the front. So we want to bring it um, probably centered, so the back, back isn't a lot larger because I didn't feel it needed to be a huge amount larger but we do want it to sit fairly straight. So we want to give ourselves just a little bit of trimming along that lower edge. We want to center it this way, whoops. So it's just, it's not hard to do. It's just its size that makes it seem a little bit more awkward than anything. So I've got a small amount to trim off there. I'll just make sure that I've got, yes, I've got enough to trim up all the way around there. So I'm going to just trim up one side here first because that's what I can get to more easily. So the hook and loop fastening is in from the edge so that so that it doesn't get caught up when we put the binding on. So we're just going to put the backing against it and we've done this sort of thing before on a cushion and then we're going to um, bind that whole edge together. So we need to trim the back to match the front and then we'll need to pop some clips or some pins or something in to hold it all together so that we can go around that edge and bind it all. So I'll just do this one edge just to show you and then I can go ahead because you don't really need to see all four sides being trimmed. So I've just got some clips here and so I'm going to clip those just, just a few to hold it together so that when I go to put the binding on it all stays together. That's all looking pretty good. So, so now I just need to go around the other three sides and trim them the same and clip them the same and then we find that we've got all that sitting really nicely. Now if you feel it's a little bit large you could put a couple of pins on the interior just to hold everything together as one piece. Um, but it probably the clips will probably be enough. So I'll go ahead and do that ready to put the binding on. I'm just stitching the binding on onto the back as you can see this is my front around this side and so I've got the, all the raw edges together just the same as I bind a quilt and it's all working really nicely so I will just keep going and then I'm going to machine the binding down when I finish going around I'll be machining it down onto the front so I'll come back and show you a little bit of that as well So I've been all the way around and stitched the binding onto the back and now I've, it doesn't really matter where you start, I've just flipped it to the front and I'm sewing the binding down. So there will be a, just a little bit of a seam that you can see right next to the binding. However, I've done a matching thread and for me that's not a problem so I'm quite happy with that. You could do it by hand, a lot of people prefer to do their bindings by hand. I like to get mine on by machine and probably especially on something like this because this is probably going to be oh well thrown around the floor because it's a floor cushion. So I'll keep going and get the rest of the binding on and then I can show it to you when it's all, all finished. So that's it, the giant floor cushion. It's 
it's finally arrived. It is quite delicious. I've done the binding as you can see like I would the quilt. We've got our opening on the back here which is makes it easy to get the filler out if we need to wash things, if we want to wash the cushion, wash the filler. And, and what I filled it with, you, you could make your own insert by making another um, pillow form and filling it with some fibre fill because I don't know whether you can actually get inserts this large. It is quite large. But I've used an old uh, duvet comforter, I'm not sure different people call them different things. Those nice sort of fluffy things that sit on your beds that have loose covers on them. This has got feathers in it. This has been sitting in my linen cupboard waiting for a new home and it's finally found one. So it's happy and I'm happy because this is quite delicious. It would be great if you've got just a young baby even, just to settle the baby on. The dogs I know would love it. Probably the cats. The grandmas like it. The kids love it. Mum likes it. Really, is there anyone who wouldn't like a cushion like this on their floor? So that was idea number 19 with our fat quarters. And there's only one more to go. So I will see you again with idea number 20.